If you've ever been interested in 3D printing, uh, a couple of years ago, I was given a 3D printer, just a very um, cheap one. This is an Ender 3 V2, and it's just a very basic entry level 3D printer, but it does the job. And I wanted to see if I could print some little miniatures to use in my gardens. So I thought it might be good to do just a little introductory video if you've never done it before. And believe me, if I can do it, you can do it. In fact, anyone can do it if I can. It's been interesting learning all the information, but I thought I might just give you a very quick rundown of what is involved with using a 3D printer. So stay tuned. With our 3D printer, uh, this is where it all begins. So you need to get some files and the best place to look for those is this website that's called Thingiverse. So I've got um, the 3D printer going in the background there. So it's printing a little Ewok at the moment and I'll show you what that looks like later. It's actually doing okay. I've been fiddling with the settings but I haven't used my 3D printer for a while. So anyway, this is where it all begins and these are free files but you, once you find your file, you need to actually put it into a program. Now these are all free. Um, I haven't paid anything for subscriptions or anything like that, but the website is called thingiverse.com. There's a crazy amount of things on here. So even if we search, let's go fairy garden. Fairy garden, sorry, I'm trying to hold the, <laughs> the um, yep, there we go the phone with one hand and type with one hand. So fairy garden. And let's have a look at the files that come up. So as you can see, there's a lot of different files. Some of them might have different parts to them. So let's have a look through and just see what we can find. So you can see some of the files there. Uh, all right, there's a fairy door there. Maybe let's have a look at that one and see. It's called Oscar's Garden Fairy Door. So if we, oh, where's my mouse gone? There it is. So if we click on there, okay, then it comes up with the files. Now I'm assuming that this will probably have two parts to it, but let's have a look and see. So, so there's the door part. I'm not sure why it's up on its end like that. There's no way that my printer would be able to print it like that. I'd have to print it flat and that's what it actually looks like, but I'm assuming there'll be two parts to it because you can see that that step there comes out. So that's what it looks like. There we go. It might even be in more than two files, but let's have a look and see, even if we just do the door part. So if we go up here to where it says, download all files, I'll click on that. And it's downloading the files to the computer, as you can see up there. All right, and then they've just popped up there. So what we need to do is to go into there, open file. This is just how I do it to um, be able to save them onto the computer. So we've got the files there. So there's two different files. One is, one says fairy door and one says fairy door mini. Now these are STL files, okay? I, I hope that that screen's not doing terrible things to your eyes. It looks like it's uh, looking a bit strange in the phone. But what I'm gonna do is to actually take both of these. So I'll click on the first one and I'll go control click on the one underneath that. So it selects both of them. And then we're going to go, we'll just copy them. And then I'm going to put them into the file that I've put, I've just got um, on this PC. I'll go to Windows. So this is just where I've stored them. Uh, 3D printer. What else have we got? And then I've just got a file for today. I'm just putting them all in the file together. And we'll paste them in here. So there they are, Fairy Door and Fairy Door Mini. All right, then what you need to do is, we'll just close that and uh, minimize that. 
you've got to download Ultimaker Cura. Now this is a free program and what it does, it slices the files. So it slices them up so that it can give information to the computer. So then we go into here, up where it says, that one there is to open a file. And then we've got to go and find, all right, here's our file that we just um, downloaded. We've got to find an STL file, so we'll double click on that and it puts it in there, okay? Now this one's going to be difficult because I think I'm gonna to have to flip it to put it flat on the ground. So if we have a look there, we've got the axis there is the blue one and let's go across here and this one here is for rotate, all right? So this, this is a tricky one. I shouldn't have done this one first, but anyway, we'll see. Let's say lay flat and it hasn't actually done it. So have a look at what it's done. It hasn't laid it flat. So what we need to do is to actually do that manually. So we'll drop that down like that and then see if we can lay it flat. Let's see if it'll lay flat now. Yeah, all right, that looks better than what it was. So hopefully that's flat. Now then you've got to decide if you're happy about that size. Now I haven't measured it. You can measure it to see. But if you go over here, this one is scale, all right? So if we have a look at the scale, it tells you the dimensions of it, okay? And, and I think that looks like an okay size. Um, it'll take a while to um, print, but that's okay. If you wanted to change it, all you would do right, in here, we would just, let's, let's say 75%. Let's try that, 75%. So if you return, watch it changes everything so that it all stays in scale. All right, let's leave it at 75%, that's fine. So when you're happy with it, all you need to do then is to go down here where it says slice, okay? So where it says slice, we're gonna push that and it starts to slice it, okay? And then we're going to save it and it will save it as what's called a G-code file. So here's where I've been saving them and we've got Fairy Door Mini, and we just go save. Where are we? Here it is. So we just go save, and it saves it as a G code. All right, so to clear it, all you need to do is to click on it, and then, sorry, to right click, and these are your options. Now there are lots of other things you can do. I'm still beginning and still learning about it, but then we clear our build plate, and then we're ready to open another file and have a fiddle till we're happy with it and then save it as a g-code so you've got to remember to slice it so basically that's what it is and then you get a little chip that comes with the 3d printer and that actually is where we save it and then that gets put into the 3d printer so we might go around and have a look at that now and also have a look at what we've just printed so let's go over there and have a look and see what's been printed and i'll show you how the files go into the 3d printer so here's what i've just printed it's not fantastic quality but i'm still fiddling with the settings but you can tell it's a little ewok of course, it would need to be um, tidied up. And so this is just a very basic 3D printer, but it comes with some little nippers like this. And so you can sort of smooth it out. You could also use a little file if you wanted to um, file the little rough edges off. I'm still fiddling with the little, um, well, with all the settings just to try and get it as perfect as possible. But I tell you what, that's better than the last effort. This is what happened last time I tried to print it and that's why I'm trying different settings. So it did the bottom okay. It didn't look great. You can see all the rough bits. And then it came off the base and it started to string. So basically you end up with a lot of uh, filament that's just strings like that. But anyway, this one to me is a win compared to the last one. So basically, uh, I'm just going to uh, move this. So this is the screen here. So what I'm gonna do is to just go back and confirm, oops, hang on. Oh, I thought it was printing by accident then. So we're gonna just going to go in here and we're going to disable the stepper. And that just means that I'm allowed to move this um, 
plate, I guess it's called, or bed, I think it's called, um, without anything being mucked up. So I'm just gonna move that so I can show you. In here is a little tiny cavity where the little SD card goes. So that's the SD card in there. So I'll take that out. That's what it looks like. Okay, it's tiny. And that goes into this. And this is a USB. It's almost, well, it, it holds the SD card. So the SD card goes in that end. So we'll see if we can put that in there with one hand. But that goes in, there's only one way it goes in, but I bet you anything I've chosen the wrong way around. <laughs> All right, prongs will be down. I assume it'll probably go that way, but let's have a look and see. Is it going to fit? Yep. So that goes in there. That goes into your computer. You save the G code file and then you take it out of your computer. It will have saved onto the SD card, which is like what you get in cameras. And then the SD card goes into the little cavity down there. So into there, put that in. And I hope I've got that in the right way. Maybe it goes up the other way. All right, looks like it goes up the other way. So you push it in and then it clicks and stays in there. So over here on the screen, you can see that it. you can only um, save a few files on the SD card though. So to see what's on there, let's have a look and see. If we go into print, oh, it's not registering. So let's take this out and put it back in again. Let's try again. Sometimes it has a bit of trouble reading the SD card. Oh, it's just come up now. So here we go. And we can see here that there are all the files that I've put in there. So that's what you see on the screen. So you go down and after you've set it all up ready to go, you choose your file. Some of these I've resized and you can go through, choose your file and then print it and just see what happens. Now I have had issues with the bed. You have to heat up the bed. You have to heat up the nozzle, which is under here. And that's where the filament comes out. And I'm still trying to get the right temperatures going because for some reason it comes loose on the base and that's when you end up with the stringing. But this one, like I said, compared to the last time, this is actually a pretty solid effort. That's looking a lot better. So still a little bit of fine tweaking to try and get it right, but that one's still stuck to the bed. So if we take that off very gently, and this is what it looks like up close, up close and personal. So there's a little bit of clean up to do. You can see it's not perfect. Um, I'm still still fiddling with the, the settings, but certain things seem to print really beautifully. Uh, I might show you some of the things that I've printed that have been a real success and see what you think of them. But anyway, let's have a look and see. I'll show you over with my plans, some of the things that I've printed that have been a great success. And yeah, it's a bit of a fiddle. But anyway, it's good fun. Uh, it does take a while. I think this took about, oh, probably 40 minutes to print. When you are on the computer, it tells you roughly how long it's going to take to print, but it also depends on your settings. So let's have a look at some of the other things that I've printed. I did start with the green filament because I thought whilst I was practicing, I didn't want to use um, anything of any value. So I chose the ugliest color <laughs> so that it didn't matter if I mucked up and made mistakes. Anyway, I will show you these other things. Uh, a couple of them I started painting and I'm not great at painting, but I'm learning. Anyway, let's have a look and see what else I've been printing.